So now let's look at our equation again. When we were looking at a fixed mass system, it was dm dt is equal to zero. We've expressed this in words for our control volume formulation, the rate of increase of mass in the control volume plus the rate of mass leaving minus the rate of mass entering the control volume is equal to zero. And so let me first give an expression for the rate of increase of mass in the volume. I want the time rate of change, and I'm using partial derivatives now because of course we have spatial derivatives as well. But if we're looking at the fixed volume, it's simply the rate of what's changing in time inside that volume. And the mass is just the density times the volume, or the density times dx, dy, dz. And that will give me my first term. The second term is a little more interesting. Let's spend a little bit more time on it. Looking at our control volume again, if I want to look at the, the mass that's leaving this phase, I can apply that Taylor series solution and look at the terms that we just looked at. For all of these faces, I'm going to add the terms where the mass is leaving the CV. So that's my x plus face, and I see the rho u plus, how that changes as I move dx over 2 to that face. And then on the x minus face, the flow is entering the control volume. And so I have my negative of exactly the term we had there, the negative here coming from moving in the minus dx over 2 direction to get to that face. Exact same thing for the, the v components. To look at these mass fluxes, this mass flux coming in, this mass flow going out, and the same thing for the z. Well, now I can start to simplify these expressions. We'll notice that I have a rho u term here, and I have a minus rho u term here. Also, I have a plus rate of change of rho u times dx over 2, and I have a minus a negative rate of change of rho u times a dx over 2. These two terms are going to combine and the half will <clears throat> and add up to a full rate of change of rho u respect to x. So, as I said, when we simplify that, we have the rho u with a minus rho u, which those are going to cancel out. And similarly, in the y, the mass flux is in the y direction. And similarly, in the mass flows in the z direction. And then these two terms in each case are going to combine, are going to add. And notice that the area in the x direction, the, the x plus face and the x minus face is a dy dz, whereas the rate of change is in the x direction. So when these dx over 2s combine to a full dx, it's going to multiply a dy dz. In the case of the y faces, I have a dy for the direction that I'm moving and the rate of change of my variable, but the area is a dx dz. So again, I'm going to end up with a full dx dy dz. Let's look at that. So when I simplify that, now I've got the combined rate of mass leaving minus the rate of mass entering, and I simply have the rate of change of either rho u, rho v, or rho w with respect to x, y, or z times dx, dy, dz, or the volume in every case. So we can continue to simplify our equation. Here's the term that's related to the changes inside the volume, and I should have combined those like in the previous one. That rate of change of mass leaving the CV minus the rate of change entering the CV is expressed as thus. And of course, it's all equal to zero. And I should have changed the color for that. I can divide by the volume. I have the volume in every single term. So I can divide by dx, dy, dz. And I'm left with this expression here, which is the full form of my conservation of mass equation in differential form. Before we finish, we're going to look at some simplified forms of that and think about it just a little bit more. The first thing I'm going to do is I've derived this in a Cartesian coordinate system, but I can apply it actually to any coordinate system and I can express it very elegantly in vector notation. In vector notation, what I would see here is that this term here, that term that came about from the flows entering and exiting the control volumes, is the definition of this interesting operator here called the divergence. Here we have a rho u, a rho v, a rho w. Those are the components of the velocity vector, but they are the derivative of them is taken the u component with respect to x, the v component with respect to y, and the w component with respect to z. That defines this divergence operator, which I can show here. The divergence of any quantity is the derivative with respect to x plus the derivative with respect to y plus the derivative of z and it's dotted with 
the vector that it is operating on. In this case, that vector is the density times the velocity vector. So here is my expression in vector notation. And let's think about the physical meaning of this. Where did this come from? This term here expressed any rate of change of mass inside the volume. This term expressed the difference between what's going in and what's going out of my volume. If the divergence of this row V is itself equal to zero, that means that what was going in and what was going out is exactly equal to each other. There is no difference between the mass flow rates going in and going out. So this divergence operator comes up a whole bunch in our conservation equations because it expresses that difference between what's going in and out of a control volume. We'll see that with other variables as well. Now let's look at some simplified forms of this. If I have a steady form, steady just means the time derivative is zero, and so if it's steady, that term is zero, and I see that the divergence of the density times the velocity vector is equal to zero, or going back to my Cartesian notation, then I have the derivative of rho u with respect to x, the derivative of rho v with respect to y, and the derivative of rho w with respect to z is equal to zero. The next simplification I can make is if the density is constant, or the incompressible form, constant density. If the density is constant, then of course the time derivative of the density is zero because there's no change in the density at all. It's not going to change in time or space. And if the density is constant, I can pull it out of the divergence operator. Remember, the divergence operator is taking derivatives, so it must be a constant if I'm going to pull it out of there. And if I pull it out, then I can divide through by it and get rid of the density. And so I'll be left with the divergence of the velocity vector itself is equal to zero. And I can go back to the Cartesian notation and simply say that du dx plus dv dy plus dw dz is equal to zero. And that's our incompressible form of the conservation of mass equation. Let's summarize that. Here I have the three different forms that we've talked about in vector notation. Here I have them in Cartesian form. It's applied to our Cartesian control volume. And here I have the full form of the equation, which we would need if we had a time-dependent problem that also had a varying density. If the flow is not time-dependent, but the density could still be varying, then we would have to use this form here, where the density is still inside the divergence operator, or inside these derivative terms, which are a representation of the divergence operator. And finally, in the simplest case, and one that we use quite frequently in this course, is here, where it's incompressible. So incompressible, steady, and full. And so that's differential form of the conservation of mass equation, which we'll see some examples of in subsequent videos.